one of the things that you've always mentioned to the youngsters is to watch the ball and not just see the ball. Uh, can you just elaborate on that part? And when you were watching the ball, there are these things uh, that you picked uh, when the baller was just going to release the ball. These little signs that you picked up as a batsman. Can you just tell us more about that? Well, I think that only comes. Uh, it comes about when. Um, you know when someone practices a lot and they you know um, and they pay special attention to detail when they're practicing so um, it just doesn't become just practice uh, um, and and just you know monotonous practice so um so to give an example when you are watching the ball you are able to see the revs you know um of the ball you are able to see the same position you are able to fix on the ball um, and then when you are seeing the ball, you only just see a red thing coming. Or if it's a white ball cricket, you only see just a white thing coming and you have to deal with it. Now, once you start doing that, once you start uh, absorbing the watching of the ball, you are then able to be, you know, to pick up exactly how the bowler is releasing the ball and certain things that you can pick up from there. So, uh, for example, um, you see, every bowler has got a variation ball. If they are going to be a good bowler, right? They will have a variation ball. So they will have a stock ball and they will have a variation ball. Now, uh, when when I played against Muraritran, he was uh, he, he, he was a rare breed because he had three, you know, separate balls. So he had his off spinner, um, which you know you would say was a stock ball. Then he had the straight one which used to loop up in the air and dip and then he had the dusra now um so you can only be able to do well against him if you are able to pick up you know how the how much the ball is turning and things like that so how i used to be able to pick muralitran um you know was if i saw the side of his hand when he was releasing the ball then I knew that was the off spinner. Because you see, Muralitra you know, could turn the ball anyway. So he didn't really need to hold the ball by the seam so that he can turn the ball. So he used to, when he saw that people are, you know, are starting to be able to, to see the seam position, he started bowling with a scrambled seam. So so then I started you know watching the hand. So when I saw the, the side of his hand, then I knew that was the off-spinner. If I saw the back of the hand, then I knew, and if it looked a, a little bit more, then I knew it was the straight one. But if I saw the back of the hand, and then I saw the thumb sticking out, then I knew that was the dozer. So you cannot be able to, to pick up these things if you are looking at the ball. Um, so that's one example. The other example is um, um, uh, Anel Kumble. Now, Kumble, um, his leg spin never really turned. So his most dangerous ball was the one that used to skip through. So, so obviously, the, the general game plan is a, is a, is a team. You play him as a medium pace ball. But, however, he had a googly that used to turn. So with the googly, as he was just about to jump, when I, now I picked that up when I was, you know, when I was playing against him in a test match. When he was about to jump, his pinky used to stick out like that. You see? Like that. So when his pinky was like that, you knew that was the googly. For every other ball, his pinky would not, he would not, um, you know, would not do that. So now these are habits that players would do. So if you are able to watch those habits, then you are at an advantage. Just to reinstate the facts here, domestic mm -hmm. bowling average, first class bowling average of 18 odd, a test match bowling average of about 26, 27. And if I'm not wrong, you have got the mighty Sana Jaisuria got out, you've got him out, got caught at Gully. If I'm not wrong, that is correct. Um, look, I enjoyed bowling as well. I um, I think 
um, I was what they would call a, a complete all-rounder. Um, you know, like I, like I mentioned earlier, with my keeping, I only started keeping when I was uh, 13. So before that, I used to bowl off spin. But then when I started when when I started playing regularly for my club, I realized that when the ball was old, I could reverse the ball both ways if I was bowling seam up. So then I'm not afraid of, of, of trying things. So in one of the games, I just said, I just asked for the ball. I said, um, you know, the situation is like this. I think I can get these wickets in the middle period. So I took off the pads and I started bowling. And I got a few wickets and then I started doing it regularly and getting a lot of wickets up until a stage where I got five or 16 in one of the games. And, um, and so when I then went for the under 19 World Cup to New Zealand, Steve Rhodes, who used to keep for, for Worcester, was the coach. In, the, in their game plan, they couldn't find how we were going to be able to replace the middle overs. We had three very good spinners in the side. And we decided we were going to be opening with one of the spinners. And then the other spinner started doing so well, and we started bringing him in quite early. So we had one, two, these two seamers who just bowl with a new ball, you know, a three or four of us each. And then we brought in the spinner straight away. And then no one was there to bowl the middle of us. So I said, well, we can have a game plan where we'll start with one spinner. The other seamer will bowl from one end. Maybe they will swap three each. And then I will bowl in the middle of us. And then he didn't know that I bowled. So he said, well, you sure? Because I was the captain. So I said, well, ask the assistant. So the assistant coach was my first coach. And he used to play to, or he was our coach at club level as well. And he says, yeah, he's taken many wickets for us. He's won games for us as a bowler. Um, you can try it. So he says, but surely, you know, betting number three, captaining, wicket keeping, and then also bowling. Is that not going to be too much for you? I said, you know what? I love my game. I enjoy playing cricket. Once I'm out there, it's, not, it's never too much. And he says, well, that's fine. And I did. Um, I then got um, player of the tournament. Um, you know, I, I think I got something like 15 wickets, if I'm not mistaken. So I've always enjoyed bowling. And then it so happened that we were playing a test match at um, Aurora Sports Club. And, um, and so we were playing a game and then the Sri Lanka was 275, if I'm not mistaken. So they were on 275 for no loss. So I decided to take off the pads. And uh, I got some like Jasuria court at Gali. Um, and I decided to give, you know, to, to I've done the breakthrough. So um, I took back the gloves. Did you did you get Jasuria out and uh, just turn to your like main bowlers and you're like, uh, hey, that's how you do it or something like that? Did you do that? <laughs> I, when I tell that story, that's how I tell it. But it's not its not really what happened. But uh, I would have loved to say that, you know what? This is how you do it, so do it now. <laughs> right. There's a part that we missed as well, where you were talking about your uh, wicket keeping and uh, the sort of a, your basics and how you went about it. There's a question that I asked you and we sort of forgot to answer that. Uh, is there is there a specific sort of observation that you have made? I mean, MS Dhoni, everyone looks at his keeping and says how unconventional he is. But you picked up one thing that I sort of noticed that uh, you you had a little bit of query on how he goes about his hands as per se. Can you just elaborate uh, for the audience uh, that same part? So, what I've generally seen in different countries, keepers generally catch similarly in different countries obviously because of the weakest that they play in so in india they, they, this in india so actually not only in india but pretty much in the subcontinents uh, uh, subcontinent keepers it's like they are clapping when they're catching the ball so whereas in um in 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 other countries they really create that bowl, that bow, so that the ball goes into that cup. However, 
even in different countries, you see that in South Africa, Australia, um, arguably Zimbabwe, because of the carry of the weekends, they, um, they, they prefer standing, being on their feet. So they move easier on their feet side to side. To side. Whereas in England, they almost prefer, you know, making sure that they are on the ground. Now, a very good example of this is uh, Alex Stewart. He was always on his knees because, you know, you can understand that because of the, how the ball wobbles after. So you've got to have a firm best. You can't be keeping around when the ball is moving also, you know. So, um, so generally, you've got keepers like that. Then, but now with Donny, I remember the first time I saw him keep. I remember thinking, you know what? He's got great hand-eye coordination. In terms of levels, I rated uh, Danish Katik more because they came in at the same time. I rated Danish Katik more than um, on natural catching and natural movement and things. Um, but I remember thinking, you know what? This guy has got great hand eye coordination. Now, Donny doesn't keep his hands together. So, yes, he's keeping his very open um, because he brings them. He brings his hands together around, right about the same uh, the time the ball gets to him. Now you have to have good hand eye coordination to do that consistently, because sometimes the ball will come a bit faster and it will pass before you close off, or sometimes it comes a bit slower and things like that, or you close them. So it, you must have great hand eye coordination to be able to keep for such a long time with that technique. So, so he's got a very usual technique, a very unusual technique, um, not similar to you know to all the other Asian keepers that I've you know that I've watched. Um, so yeah, we'll do the quickish sort of a questions uh, right away. This uh, you will probably take a little less time to pick them, but you'll have to react quick. Right, uh, three okay. young Zimbabwe players from the current setup who you think will probably go on and make a mark in the cricketing history of Zimbabwe? Uh, Kao Mumba is a fast bowler, but he will end up being a fast bowler who can bet. Uh, uh, Tarsaim Sakanda, uh, he's a batsman. Gun fielder. Uh, he bowls a little bit, but he's a, probably, arguably, one of the best fielders in the world, but also a very talented batsman. The third one for me will be Ryan Bell. Ryan Bell is a very talented left-handed batsman. Um, he bowls leg spin as well. His leg spin is underrated. Um, and I think he's going to end up being a proper, uh, proper, proper all-rounder. Uh, I'm sure he's working more on his, on his leg spin. Um, and, you know, very talented player as well. Uh, in the same sort of a breath, if you are to pick three youngsters from, say, the global game as such, from other countries that you think will probably go on and you know make a mark in the future. Um, I don't know if well, um, I think I'll have to pick Rabada. Will be one. Um, you know, he's. I mean, he's exceptional. He's a very you know top class, top class bowler. Um, gets the ball to swing. You know, gets the ball to swing at good pace. Is not afraid of a fight. Um, you know, as a fast bowler, he's got all the attributes, you know, to to continue to do well. Really, um, I'm a I'm a little bit of fan of um, of, of Pant. Uh, um, I think you know when he his, his fearlessness when he bats. Uh, obviously, you know, if directed well, um, I think will you know will definitely do. You know, amazing stuff. Um, you know, in the in the future, um, the other one will probably be the younger Karen. Um, I think, you know, it's quite interesting that I would have, I watch I watch them play when they were when they were young. Obviously, with their dad being Zimbabwean and he was our coach at some point, and you see them with bat and ball almost every time, and to see what they've done. Um, you know, and, and what they've achieved. I mean, it's, it's, it's great to see. Um, but, um, you know, it looks like the younger one has got a bit more fight. 
um, you know, which obviously is expressed not in words, but it's expressed in his actions when he plays. So those are the three that I'll probably pick for now. If if you are to pick uh, three all-time best wicket keepers, but format specific, so I'll let you pick one of the greatest keepers that you think in the T20s, ODIs, and then uh, you know Test matches. I think T- T20s. I'll have to leave T20s out of it because you know you only probably get five balls <laughs> coming to you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the other balls are flying to the boundary, you know. So, so. Um, I think um, I I like um, no, this is just genuinely keeping. You see, the keeping one is very difficult for me. I will explain why, because I have white footage or footages of uh, Jack Russell being a keeper. I appreciate several things about different keepers, you see. So maybe if I, I'm going to be biased, I'm going to mention a several that are in my top league. Okay. So I will, I will Jack Russell is one. Then I will have to I'll have to pick uh, Sarah. Um, Sarah is another one. Uh, I watched a keep when she was young. I've watched a keep, you know, every time, and you know she's been outstanding. I am a big fan of uh, Ridi Mansaha because uh, we're talking purely gloves. So Ridi Mansaha doesn't put a finger wrong. I mean, um, and he's managed to keep well not only in India but also, you know, abroad. Um, then another one is um, Pain. Uh, Australian skipper. Um, purely gloves, the guy can keep. Uh, so for me, those are on my top bracket. Though if I'm now to go into specifics, I can tell you what I like about this one in the life. But now that too, you know, we're not going to, it will then um, go of our time because it will have to be specific. <laughs> um, so yeah. I'll kind of let you off the hook, but I know how you, how much you love keep, keeping and how you read the game. So it's, I can understand that. But I won't let you off the hook in the next one, where I'm asking you to pick the toughest batsman that you have came across in the opposition and the toughest bowler that you have faced. The toughest bowler is easy for me. It is um, Tamar Elitra. Because, uh... because he had like 15 variations and all of them turned square. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. I mean, it was very difficult. I mean, I I struggled, I struggled big time the early part, and then once I managed to read him, he never dismissed me once more, and I was able to score off him. However, um, he's he, he was consistent man, and he just you know he would not let you off. It was not you would not go into pilot mode of batting. With him, you there was no pilot mode. You just had to make sure that you're paying attention to every ball. So for me, it's Mutaya Murilitra. And betting, I will have to, to put... Stop um, Do you think uh, Murli, the way he, he ran and his eyes, did, does all of that aura come into the entire uh, uh, you know, frame of playing Murli? A lot of people say that. However, if you're looking at the eyes, then you're not watching the ball. You know? <laughs> Um, and 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 you see the other thing is, once maybe for someone who hasn't played against him or who doesn't, uh, who isn't related to him, who doesn't know him, might feel that. But for anyone who knows him, he was such an is such a nice person that whatever you would see when he's running in, when he look, you know, when he open his eyes, when he's coming home. You, it's 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 not like he, it's not his character whatsoever. He is one of the nicest people here on earth. You see, so so if if uh, because I know that side of him, the you know the way he used to run up never intimidated me any bit because he is such a nice person and his wife, you know, uh, gets along with my wife really well. You know, up to date. So um, he's. Yeah, he's just he's just an amazing person. So Mutai Murilitra on the bowling and 
This one, obviously, there will be many that would come uh, to compete on it, but I will have to pick Sachin Tendulkar. Um, I never felt, whenever I played against him, um, we never, I never felt like we we got him bogged down at all. Like he free flowed every time. So, and when we got him out, maybe if we managed to get him out for a low score once, and that was only once. You'd only get, you know, in the series, it will only be once. And then the second game, he comes in and he scores. So, um, so um, you know, it will have to be, it will have to be such a thing. If, if I were to push you on that answer and say, if as a keeper, if you picked one thing, what was it? Was it such a balance? Was it his temperament? Oh, if, the, if there's one thing you could pick and say, oh, that just stood out. So I'll pick out. I'll, I'll talk about the best, the, the the most important, which is balance. Uh, so the way he was able to freely score both sides of the wickets, and not only freely score both sides of the wickets, but he would be able to get into positions where he would score where he wanted at times. So you give him three almost similar balls in the same area, and he would decide to do what he wants with them. Now, I know as one who has played at the highest level that you can only do that if your balance is good. So for me, it will have to be his balance, which was great. Right. Uh, just uh, just something else. These are uh, little rapid fires that I want you to ask. Uh, of course, if, I mean, you, you had a fantastic life and I won't be surprised if they ever make a movie about you. If they do, that is, who do you want to play Tatenda Taibu? What what actor do you think will fit that role? That's, that's not that's not a good question for me, you know, because my favorite my favorite actor to play that is way you know above my age, and that is Morgan Freeman. But um, it's impossible for him to play Tatenda. You see, that's that's the bad part. Uh, you uh, have a lovely voice could, though in the movie. If that could happen. Who does that? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, who could beat that voice? <laughs> Right, but apart from uh, yeah. Morgan Freeman, anyone else, if you think? Um, even the sec- my second choice is also, you know, being away, it's Denzel Washington. <laughs> um, so, uh, again, I mean, that's why I said it's not a good question for me because all my, my great stars that I would want to, to be entertained at. But you know what they're doing nowadays? Um, when they did um, the one with Will Smith when he was younger, maybe they can do something like that, it would be nice. Absolutely, absolutely, and uh, I mean, I would be, I would really watch that uh, movie called Keeper of Fate, where there is uh, Denzel Washington just, you know, going around, just, just making things right. And you know what you can do? You can actually make Denzel, Denzel Washington, you know, get through that scenario and probably have a voiceover of Morgan Freeman, so you'll have the perfect sort of a combo. <laughs> uh, that's one, or even, or even a better one. My 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 older boy can act, um, you know. So maybe he can be playing Tatenda Taibu, and he is Tatenda Taibu as well. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> now, if you're not a cricketer, what would you have become? Uh, not just in sports, but did you have like other disciplines that you were inclined to? Um, I would have gone in the line of accountancy. Uh, very good with numbers and still am good with numbers uh, and I loved I loved numbers uh, was still does um, and I definitely would have gone in that in that line I mean even when I did my A levels it was um, uh, accounts management of business and art so definitely accounts uh, and no no wonder it was you who made the, a huge thing about mismanagement of funds in Zimbabwe <laughs> Because you must have. Thank <laughs> <laughs> God it done. Just, just on a lighter note, just to continue that. Now, if if you told anyone that you were being adventurous while eating or trying out a dish, what would that be? Snails. <laughs> that is spectacular. That is adventurous. Uh, have you mm. tried snail before? I almost did, but I ended up not. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, pick pick one moment in your entire playing career or while you are batting at the crease where you not necessarily told yourself, but you felt 
that hey listen i belong here and this is i'm probably one of you know I, i belong to the very best you were probably dominating at that point in time what what can you consider probably that one moment where you thought you were at the peak of your game um 2007 um it's a match against south africa and i've just hit uh del stein for three sixes in one over if i if my memory serves me right i think it was and i scored 40 in that innings it's probably that innings and uh, what was stein's reaction I mean, i'm pretty sure that that uh, come back to you with a couple of bounces or something like that so did he I um well he couldn't come back with a couple of bounces because it was the uh, a few attempted bounces that I had hit for six. So I hooked one for six over deep mid wicket and uh, sorry deep square leg and there was a deep square leg on the boundary. And I cleared him, I hit it for a six. Then I hit another one. Um there was another shot and I cut it over um um over third man for six. Then I pulled another one over mid on for six. So they were all shot both. Um yeah, so it was that that knock, uh, the 40 knock I think. Yes, you know obviously I the 107 is more special because the 100 and I you know I, I played really well. But the 40 before this 107 was also special for me. Uh just uh, just so that we're in quarantine everyone is watching a lot of like uh, these web series Netflix and all of that. Are you are you a watcher in those terms do you do you watch a lot of content do you watch a lot of movies and if so what was the last thing did you watch well i don't watch a lot um because you know we like i said we you know we are doing a lot we've got our program at home and we 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 you know we we carry our program today you know to the dot um but the last movie i watched is um it's red uh, it's an old movie by uh, bruce willis um but um yeah if it movie wise i think i like um a bit a bit of action like war movies brave art uh what are the things that you think are probably the ones that are going to stay with you always in terms of principles and are there are there any sort of a you know n- near future goals that you have to accomplish not just as you know as a former cricketer but as someone who can give back to the game do, do you have some plans in place for the near future oh yes um so just going back to the first question um i think um people generally underestimate the power of love i think that's uh, one thing that i've learned over the years you know love seems to be you know seems to be a very weak um you know aspect of life but for me um it can move mountains for me it's it's the strongest aspect um you know that um can do m- more wonder than any you know other can do so um, that's that's uh, that has been my biggest lesson uh, thus far and then um i've got a taibu 44 trust where i you know i donate cricket equipment and give an opportunity for kids to play the sport um and at the moment i only donate in zimbabwe um uh, my last donation was here in october um and i always like to give someone else an opportunity because some people gave me an opportunity uh that's one thing that i mean you know uh, that i'm do- currently doing the other thing uh is um i've got an app that's coming up just now uh i creek is going to be the name of the cricket application so um, it would be an application where we you know it's very difficult to find coaches nowadays or to find good coaches um and you know without actually going somewhere so it's like it's it's virtual coaching when you know you will ask me a question um uh, and then you know i will be able to answer your question or even demonstrate what whatever you've asked so you don't have to leave your house um you know it can be in writing or it can be a video and depending um you know de- depending on the points that you would have on the app it can be my response can be a video or can be in writing um and uh, people can virtually get coaching from anywhere so 
that's the app that we are you know probably going to release in the next two months um and i think that that way you'll be able to get you know a lot of kids around the world will have um you know first contact with international cricketers who will be able to tell them you know uh, uh, exactly how the experiences were in helping them in their game that's uh that is that is just brilliant the one line that you just said summarizes everything that a lot that you have just got from this game this game has celebrated you and you know you were the poster boy for zimbabwe you'll continue to be one of the greatest when it comes to zimbabwe cricket and so now in whatever aspect that you can give it back it is just brilliant thank you thanks a lot tatenda you you were always this you've always been one of the nicest person that i've spoken to but the fact that you are very a tremendous cricketer you know makes us to keep coming back at you for stories thanks a lot for your time and i really wish we do this again soon thank you very much thank you